All right, we just got done with our World War II unit. It's over, finally. Peace for our time, hallelujah. Not so fast, my friend. Uh, the Cold War is going to begin almost immediately when World War II is over. Now, the enemy of my enemy is now my enemy. That's not how the phrase goes. That's all right. Um, so what we're going to talk about is how we, we said how we joined up with the Soviet Union because the enemy of my enemy is my friend. We had the common enemy in Hitler, and so we joined up as friendships. So that's not going to last. We're just going to be enemies from this point on. Right? The United States and the Soviet Union are going to merge from World War II as the two major superpowers in the world. Right? The Soviets were instrumental in, in defeating the Nazis in Europe. Uh, they were they played a huge role. They showed, they kind of flexed their military muscle. They emerged from the war as having the most powerful military in the world. They just defeated one of the most powerful militaries the world has ever seen in, in Nazi Germany. Uh, and so the Soviets were able to conquer them. So they kind of leave the war flexing their muscles. But then the U.S., not to be outdone, they dropped those two atomic bombs on Japan showing uh, that, yeah, the Soviets might have a stronger army and they might have a bigger army, but we have the technological prowess all right, that no one should mess with us. So the United States and the Soviet Union really emerge as these two superpowers, but they couldn't have been more different. All right, and this is going to really be these differences and desires to lead the world are going to really lead to a ton of conflicts over the next 50 years that we're going to be getting into. Now, this spans over a long period of time, so it can get a little bit confusing. And we never directly fight the Soviet Union in a war. And it's the Cold War. Uh, but we will fight a bunch of smaller wars, which we'll get into later. All right. And so these different ideologies, I'm going to use that word a lot. That's just a way to say what they believe. Uh, the United States believes in free democratic election. They did not. They feared the spread of communism. All right. Their, their goal was to contain communism. And prevent other countries from becoming communist nations. All right, during this time, the Soviet Union believes in a totalitarian government, or excuse me, yeah, government, but communist rule. They did not like capitalism. They wanted to spread communism. They wanted to spread it around the world because the more countries that are communist, the more trade partners you have, the more like-minded people you have, that the more success you're going to have. All right, and so. The Soviet Union, what they do is they're going to, we, we, we talked about Stalingrad and the, and the curse, the Battle of the Curse, in which the Soviet Union was driving the Germans out of their territory. So the, the Germans go deep into Soviet territory, and now they start to drive them out. Well, all these countries, they're going to liberate these countries from Nazi control. Uh, they are going to eliminate them from Nazi control. And so all of these countries... Uh, Poland, I, I just wrote them up here that they're in your notes, but it's Poland, uh, East Germany, obviously will be Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria. When they go and they push the Nazis out of this territory, these places don't have a government. They've been ruled by the Nazis for, you know, Czechoslovakia got taken over in 39. Poland got taken over in 39. You know, these areas got taken over in, you know, the 39, 40. They've been, they've been Nazi occupied for four years. They don't have governments, so the Soviet Union is going to keep their influence there and keep them there, and they're going to become known as Soviet satellites. Now, once again, a satellite, so they're their own country, but they're really taking their control, they're taking their directives from the Soviet Union. So they're not part of the Soviet Union, technically. They're called satellite states because they're basically just relaying the information that's given to them by the Soviet Union. All right, that's an important distinction. They're their own country. But those are satellite state. But why? Why would the Soviet Union do that? Well, all right. So a couple things we got to remember about Stalin. Stalin's paranoid. He killed millions of his own people during the Great Purchase. All right, the guy's nuts. All right, so he's already paranoid. But he also doesn't trust the West. All right, because where did he just get invaded from? The West. He just got invaded by the Germans not that long ago. All right, and so he doesn't trust the West. Him and Truman do not have the relationship that him and um, Roosevelt had. Uh, and so he doesn't trust the West, so he's trying to create a buffer zone. So he wants to create a buffer zone between their country and the Western democratic nations. All right. And so Stalin, when he's meddling in these affairs, he's actually violating. There are three conferences that took place in major conferences in, in World War II. One of them is the Yalta Conference, where the United Nations is formed. Uh, and this said that European states should be able to freely pick, they can be Soviet friendly, like they shouldn't be anti-Soviet necessarily, but they should be able to freely pick their government. Stalin said, yeah, I agree to that. And then he went back on his word. 
All right, and Churchill is really going to be the first one to come about this, Winston Churchill. He got voted out of office, remember, so he's not doing this from a man in office, but he sees what's going on. And remember, this is the guy who called out Hitler. He's been saying Hitler is taking over. We need to stop him. We need to stop him, and nobody listened to him until it was too late. Hitler, or excuse me, Hitler. Churchill gives us a speech uh, in March of 46. So this is March of 46. March of 46. This is months after World War II. And everybody's just that sigh of relief, like, oh, well, it's over. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, there's an iron curtain that's cutting across our continent. And the Soviets are influencing it. Basically, he's saying with this description, because we're going to talk about this a lot, that Europe is divided once again. And we're going to have problems because the Soviet Union is exerting their influence in areas where they shouldn't be. And he's he's the guy that called out Hitler. So we, we probably should trust him. He's the, he, he's saying we're going to have issues. The rest of the world's like, come on, man. Are you serious? Gosh, we just got done fighting a war and we got another problem. This is ridiculous. Now, and so the U.S. is going to respond to this, this Iron Curtain. Uh, uh, Harry Truman, the president, who he's the one that decided to drop the bombs on Japan, he came into power after Roosevelt died. Uh, he's going to create what is known as the Truman Doctrine. All right, this was created to provide aid to any democratic country that needed help against ex external or internal authoritarian regimes. All right, trying to take over. Basically, that's saying he didn't say the word communism because he didn't want to, you know, poke the bear. But he's like, hey, if you're having an uprising in your country, call, give us a call. We're going to help you. We'll give you money. We'll give you military aid. We'll give you whatever you need to remain democratic. All right. And and so and I got that highlighted because that's a term I'm going to we're going to be talking about that a ton. We're going to talk about the Iron Curtain a lot, I, the Truman Doctrine. Um, and basically what the fear was, if you remember Nazi Germany, what happened when they didn't get involved until it was too late? Now Hitler's going to end up taking over pretty much all of Europe. They feared if we don't get involved now that this communism is going to spread and pretty much all of Europe is going to be taken over by communists. And so the U.S. says, we got to get involved. We got to do something. They start providing aid to Greece and Turkey uh, was the first places they did uh, $400 million to aid Greece and Turkey. That was the first place, but other places got money from it as well. All right, so communism spread to Eastern Europe. So we already talked about the Soviet satellites that have been created. All of Eastern Europe has become communist. All right. What about how's the rest of Europe doing? Um, not great. All right. Why? Well, you remember Europe's war torn. All right. These countries are destroyed. All right. These countries have been had fighting occurring in them. You had Germany has been firebombed by the by the uh, allies. You have this there. They've been fighting in France. They've been fighting in Italy. They've been fighting. And there's all this damage that has been done. You're like, wait, that sounds familiar. There's, there's people without jobs. These economies, they're without governments. They're out without economic system. It's like we've heard this before where there's desperation. Yeah, the Great Depression. When these countries had these huge problems, what happened? Ah, Hitler came into power. Yeah, he was created largely because of the Depression. And so these, Euro these uh, people in America, they say, hey, if we don't do something to help out Europe. Because remember, America is emerging as a superpower. Their economy is intact. They don't have these huge damages done to their country. And they realize if we don't do something, things will get bad again. All right. And we're going to have the exact same situation where you're going to have all these extremist people rising into power. And that's where the Marshall Plan is going to come in. All right. It's really called the European Economic Recovery Plan, but the Marshall Plan is just easier. So we'll call it that. Basically, they said if that communism and radical forms of government take rise when the economy is bad, when there's financial problems. And that's true. We talk, just talked about that with the Great Depression. A lot of dictators started rising into power during the Great Depression. So Marshall said, hey, we need to provide aid to these countries to rebuild and to get their economies rolling again. Because if we do nothing, we will be back in the exact same scenario fighting in a war because we're going to have all this communism, all this uprising take place and we're going to have radical forms of government. Just like we did, World War One. It was offered to everyone. All right, the hope was that it would eliminate. If you eliminate the chaotic economic conditions, they would. That would. You would not need any radical changes in government. They offered it to everyone. The Soviet Union didn't like that. They said no. Uh, you're trying to buy our allies. They were mad about that, but everyone else said yes, and it was a huge success. All right. And so really the difference between these two, because this kind of does get confusing. Think of the Truman Doctrine as more of a reactive plan. Like, hey, you're being attacked. We got your back. We'll help you. 
Whereas the Marshall Plan, think of it as proactive, like, hey, we're going to get out in front of this problem before it happens. All right, so we're going to be there. We're going to give you money so that problems don't occur. All right, we'll give you financial aid, not not military support necessarily, or not 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 with our army. Think of money, Marshall. All right, money, 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 Marshall. That's alliteration. It's an English word. We'll start with an M. Money, Marshall. We're going to give you money to help fight or to help prevent communism. All right, and both were really both created to stop the spread of communism. All right, so what happened? So the Soviet Union didn't like the Marshall Plan. They didn't like the Truman Doctrine, obviously. So it's, it's a radical change in policy where we're no longer just going to sit by and let the Soviet Union do what they want uh, and take over. We're going to get actively involved in Europe. All right, so we're going to get involved and we're going to help countries fight off communism. We're going to get involved, help them rebuild so they don't become communist. All right, so real quick, I want to recap what happened to Germany after World War II. Because it's like, oh, yeah, hey, you ever think of that? What happened to them? Well, they're going to get divided into four zones. Uh, Britain, United States, France. Uh, Lord knows why they got territory. It's like, hey, you guys fought for a month. You can have some. Uh, and then the Soviet Union is going to get territory in in East Germany. Now, Berlin is the capital that's up here. It's going to be divided the same way. It's going to be divided into four zones. All right. And that's going to be important. Did Stalin like the fact that the West was in his backyard? Did Stalin like the fact that they were trying to provide aid to buy allies? No, 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 no. No, he didn't like the fact that the West was in there. He didn't like the fact that he, the U.S. is giving money to rebuild Germany. They didn't like that stuff. All right, so Stalin, he's upset about this because he thinks they're trying to buy allies. Uh, and so Stalin is going to respond to this with the first crisis of the Cold War. That's called the Berlin Blockade. All right, so this is just three years after the fighting stops in Europe. It looks like it's going to happen again. The Soviets didn't like the West being in their territory. They didn't like that they're trying to buy allies, so they tried to cut them off from supplies. You couldn't get trains or trucks. You couldn't get anything. All power is cut off to these people. You've got 2.5 million people without food, medicine, fuel, electricity, uh, all that stuff. This is the first time that the U.S. is going to have a direct conf confrontation with the Soviet Union. Uh, and so they have to respond to how. All right. So they can't get them food because they can't send trucks through because the Soviets just blockaded everything. And then on the other side of this, you're like, oh, why didn't they just come over here? That's all Soviet territory as well. All right. And this is all Soviet Soviet zone. So they really have no way to get these people food, but they have to respond because they can't let Stalin just bully their way into it. Because last time you gave into a dictator, he just kept taking more. All right. So this is going to be the first major crisis of the Cold War that we're going to talk about.